by getting this kind of public support, it will enhance their uh, chances of actually getting governments to provide the kind of practical resources and support to implement. But I think, I think no, but I wanted to, to add that uh, we, what we need is uh, are more donors. We, we just don't have enough of them. There are other considerations. I mean, uh, part of what we were talking about in the last, uh, in the last debate around this is if people are giving uh, an organ and it takes them out of commission for a couple of weeks or, or, or three or four or five weeks, shouldn't there be more financial support for them? And that's another consideration. This is, so that's something governments have to look at as well. But the fundamental problem is that we don't have enough people giving, uh, willing to, or giving consent for their organs to be used, and that's part of the of the overall campaign. And and it does take time. And the more uh, consciousness you build around it, the more people will give. So this is another step in that direction. How close are we to have this alert? I mean, the resolution is, uh, in my sense, weak. Why not going ahead with the bill and make it reality? You're you're absolutely right. And the next step would be a bill. Uh, and what we want to do uh, is collectively, jointly, uh, consult with stakeholders. Uh, it's not up to us to craft that bill as politicians. Uh, we will be there to help, but we want to uh, consult with the medical community uh, to ensure that all of the appropriate components of that bill are there. And uh, when we've had a chance to do that work, the objective is to bring that bill forward. But Frank, I mean, the, the, the main point is that if the government wants to introduce a bill on this, they would have uh, more resources than we do. Uh, our, our initiative is simply moving this uh, agenda along, but the government can and should, in fact, uh, think about proposing a bill. Um, there should be no barrier to, to that introduction, uh, given that we all believe that it's something that can be done. Hopefully they might uh, sidetrack us and introduce a bill. So would you guys do your own private members bill? Well, I think what Rosario is saying yeah. is hopefully there's no need for a private members bill. Uh, this resolution sends a strong signal that all three parties think this is important. What we would ideally like to see uh, is the Minister of Health now taking the initiative and coming forward with a government bill to get on with. Is this something your government is willing to do? Well, I think that... Um, Closer to the mics, please. Yeah. Sorry. Closer to the mics. As, as it has been mentioned, I believe that a number of members are all supportive of this, and uh, it's a great initiative uh, in principle, and um, we want to do everything that we can to uh, increase organ donation, and, and it's something that will need to be looked at. Mm -hmm. And finally, like, how would this alert work in Black Young Frank, for instance? Uh, are we going to see, we see like uh, the same kind of alert we see for the Amber yeah. Alert? Uh, yeah, well, we have the Amber. The idea. Amber Alert is in place, and also uh, most recently, our government introduced uh, um, the uh, alert for people who suffer uh, uh, from uh, Alzheimer's, for example, and often go wandering. Um, so uh, that's the Silver Alert. It, I, I believe that it could work on uh, similar principles. It's same, same principle. Yeah, it's the same principle. But it, would be, it would be the medical profession that would determine who would be on that list in terms of yes. the alert. It wouldn't yeah. be us determining it, that list. Obviously. And it would, uh, I am sure, require cooperation from the media. So there will have to be consultations right. so with the so media. Could someone just walk me through how this would work then? So let's say there's a 10 year old boy in the hospital who needs a kidney. Then this alert might, if the case is appropriate, then this alert might be issued, and they would say we have a, we need a kidney for a ten-year-old boy who's going to die in a couple of days. Yeah. If we don't, and that's so as simple as that. It's as simple as that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, the OP, the OPP uh, often don't want to put out Amber Alerts because they say too many, and people stop listening. We got an Amber Alert. We got a Silver Alert. I don't question for a second that this is important and needed. But is there not a point when you start saying? People are not going to listen anymore because there's too many alerts I, out I there. Don't, I personally don't believe that. Uh, this would be a new system. This would be a new system, obviously. Um, and most people are not familiar with it. So the fact that we would be doing that uh, immediately would send an alert to people saying that they could, they should donate and so on. Um, given that we haven't done this yet, it's hard to, it's hard to simply say that it's going to be too much because it's a new area altogether. But I think people are looking for that information. And I don't think they would be turned off at all.
uh, but, uh, but if, if, if that were to be something that could become a problem down the line, there's something we could discuss, but at the moment, I don't believe that's an issue at all. You know, just uh, to speak briefly to that, uh, we have many examples here, uh, just in very recent uh, uh, months, uh, of individuals who have been desperate, for example, for a kidney transplant. And the system as it normally works uh, has left them on, uh, on the waiting list. When uh, alerts, public alerts have been put out, uh, people respond to it. And we have people who are alive today because there was a public alert. And uh, if I could, I'd like to ask George Marcello to just comment on that very uh, issue. It was really George's initiative, and George, maybe you could uh, give an example. I have a constituent in my, uh, in my riding, uh, Mr. Bruce Cuthbert. Uh, we had a press conference here at uh, Queen's Park. Uh, he had been waiting, was very desperate. It was as a result of that press conference, that public alert, that a donor came forward. He's alive today and doing well. So this is, I, I think, a lot of that, that particular example uh, gave initiative to what we're doing here today to say, look, if it could happen for Bruce, it can happen for many other people. And uh, it's simply a matter of uh, how, what, to what ends do we go uh, to ensure that people at least have the opportunity uh, for life. George, if you want to comment. Thank you, Frank. I just want to uh Add just a few more comments. I got together with uh, Frank about uh, 11 months ago and started talking to him about this. And uh, this was over many years of uh, uh, trying to do everything we can to, to improve the uh, system through various uh, methods. As everyone knows, I worked with Peter Cormos uh, at the beginning trying to, to get the opt out system uh, going here. but. You know, we came to a realization that we had to, to look at something that would be practical, that, that would be supported, uh, and, and that's uh, why I supported Frank Lees on both his initiatives, uh, and the most recent one with the online registry. Uh, because I, I think once we make it as easy as possible for people to register, then the idea, as everybody's been saying here, is, is to get the uh, donors. And through all the activities that we've done over the past 20 years, uh, we must have, I say, intervened in, in hundreds of uh, family situations where, where the mother or the father or the brother or the sister would be calling step by step uh, to help them save their child or their brother or their sister. And what we would put, in effect, was a kind of an Amber Alert. Uh, we, we appealed to the media, we uh, did our torch tracks, and I'll tell you something, 99% of all the activities that we did uh, in, in this area, doing, doing it like that, we had happy stories to share afterwards. So, uh, you know, we, we are looking at something that's practical, that'll, that will, will uh, be supported by, by all the members and, and by sending out uh, an alert, you can't send out enough alerts, you know. I mean, I, I would be happy to, to, to let everybody know that right now, uh, just two, two um, blocks down at Sick Kids Children Hospital, there's 200 kids that need an Amber Alert, you know. So are we going to tell them? That, sorry, we, we, we can't act on your behalf because there's too many alerts or too many appeals. Um, so I, I think along with the, the, the politicians, the government, the media, we form our partnerships. We form our partnerships and make this a priority to save our children. And that's why it was appropriate for us to, do, to make this announcement today in honor of two famous fathers uh, that had their children lost to them through, through a very uh, 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 tragic situations. And, and, and that's why we want to, uh, if I could get everybody's consent, to carry this uh, act, uh, this bill, or whatever it turns out to be, in their memories. Uh, just to remind people, because yes, there is a lot of uh, states, countries, that are looking to see how Ontario does with this. I've been in contact with, with most of them. So they're paying attention to this. So we can pave the road right here in Ontario. We can do it here if we got the cooperation of the government uh, and then our stakeholders with the medical community and everybody else, we could make this happen. And, and it will be successful if we make it happen. Uh,
just, just in, in terms of details, let's say you send an alert, but what do you do with the information? Like, uh, you need somebody with another kid dying in order to... Sorry, I didn't hear the whole thing. I mean, uh, if, when you send an alert, uh, how do you use this information? I mean, you, you need another kid I, to be dying. I'll you know, explain... Just to understand how the public yeah. can help. No, I understand. I understand. I'll explain my idea. Yeah. You know, whether that changes over the process, you know, we'll leave it up to, to how it's going to be. My idea was, in the Amber Alert, we're directing the police uh, enforcement groups to issue the Amber Alert, because it's an official missing child, and, and they're the ones that issue the what, what, what we would do is have the hospitals issue the Torch of Life alert. So they would have to verify that it is, yes, a true medical condition that, that requires a donation. And, and it would be their discretion on whether it meets the guidelines to be an alert. And, and we would be forming our partnerships with the media. So, I mean, for instance, the Star, the Sun uh, can devote one page. Uh, for the, the children to, to show what children are in need uh, uh, and, and we can work with other media outlets to, to do this and and we can create a website uh, website uh, a popular government website to house all the uh, children that are in need and to get people to, to look so uh, yes if, if it would mean every day to do an alert that's what we would do that's how important those children are to us I there, there was something that that you can hear from any family member that's in this situation right now, not to leave any stone unturned when it comes to saving a life. So we cannot put limits to this. Leave no st stone unturned. No, we don't have to this can I just uh, mention there was a press conference scheduled uh, inside, but given the fact that we've had an opportunity to exchange questions here, uh, I don't think there's a need for that. Okay, cool. Okay. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Roger.